DreamWorks is a mogul in the animation world, making plenty of classic films and giving us a ton of evildoers. Their villains are iconic, but being a villain comes with crimes, and crimes can't go unpunished. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and today we're sentencing DreamWorks villains for their crimes. Court is in session. Today, we'll be talking about DreamWorks' first five films, Ants, The Prince of Egypt, The Road to El Dorado, Chicken Run, and of course, the iconic Shrek. So let's jump into it. We'll be starting with the very first film, Ants. First is Colonel Cutter, who is the second in command to General Mandible. Cutter isn't particularly a bad guy. For the most part, his crimes come from working under Mandible. However, he does change sides. That said, he would be charged with the kidnapping of a royal figure because after Princess Bala leaves, Cutter tracks her down and takes her back to Mandible against her will. However, due to his face turn, it's likely the sentence would be smaller than others. This is for the good of the colonies. Honestly, the kidnapping is the worst crime he committed, and due to his change for the good, we'll say that he ends up with 30 hours of community service. Cutter is a good guy at heart, and he does try to stop Mandible from doing something that is genocidal in nature. Next is the main villain, General Mandible. Mandible was once the general of the Ant Army and the fiancé of Princess Bala prior to the film. He formed a plan to build a much stronger and better population of ants. This plan consists of flooding the entirety of the ant hill so that only the worthy would survive. Among his many crimes is the indirect mass murder of most of the army when he sent them on a mission to a termite hive that ends up with them killed. He abuses his power and commits treasonous acts, such as aiding in the kidnapping of Princess Bala. We'll start anew with you by my side as my queen. He also attempts regicide by killing the queen and even attempts a populist side or an extermination of an entire population. Mandible doesn't succeed in his attempts, but that doesn't mean he should get off the hook. Mandible's punishment is a public execution, likely through a beheading. While this is a hefty punishment, it's fair. The next film is The Prince of Egypt. The first villain is Pharaoh Seti I. Seti is the father of Ramses and the adopted father of Moses, being the crowned pharaoh prior to his death. Seti abused his status at any opportunity, being on the line for both psychological abuse and abuse of power, alongside his many other crimes as most stem from this. These include his obvious use of slavery, which is continued by his son, but also through torture and corruption. However, his worst crimes were his attempted genocide and his use of mass murder. In fact, this includes mass infanticide, where he had thousands of newborn and young babies killed. Simply to stop any sort of uprising, Seti's punishment would be swift, a hearty public execution, likely by poisoning. He was a powerful despot and used his position for all kinds of criminal acts, which means he deserves a similarly powerful punishment. Next, we have Hotep and Hui. These two have been servants of the pharaoh for a while, having served both Ramses and his father Seti. They work as his advisors and even as con artists to some degree. In fact, their crimes stem from their time as Seti and Ramses' servants. This man committed a serious crime against the gods. First, they're accessories to all of Seti and Ramsey's crimes, though probably very indirectly at worst. However, since they work mostly as con artists, they are very guilty of fraud, as they constantly defraud those they think are easy targets. They also commit acts of kidnapping and conspiracy, both of which with Ramses during his time as Pharaoh. Hotep and Hui aren't as bad as a lot of other villains on our list, but we will sentence them to 15 years in prison. This is mostly because Hotep and Hui don't get enough screen time to reveal any other crimes that we suspect they might be guilty of as well. Next is the main villain, Pharaoh Ramses. Ramses is the pharaoh of Egypt and the adopted brother of the main character, Moses. Much like his father Seti, he abuses his powers at almost every turn because he felt like it was the most necessary. Among these many abuses are an attempted genocide, much like his father did, and slavery. He's committed acts of psychological abuse, attempted mass murder, and corruption. However, that's not it. His other crimes range from torture to animal cruelty. Ramses is a major criminal, and while his list of crimes stand above many of his peers, a lot of it comes from his upbringing by a similar criminal figure. Ramses may be the pharaoh of Egypt, but his crime still must be punished. I'm not merely going to restore this temple. As such, like his father, a public execution would be best, and we think by hanging. Ramses is a monster by any stretch of the imagination, despite his rough past. Now we move on to the next movie, The Road to El Dorado. The first criminal on the docket is Hernan Cortez. 
Hernan is an explorer, trying to find El Dorado, and based on the explorer who looked for the Fountain of Youth, he crosses paths with the protagonist and acts as the secondary antagonist. He's committed many criminal actions as he moves along the film. He's committed atrocities such as war crimes, abuse of power, and even invasion as he tries to plunder El Dorado of all of its gold. He tried to enslave and kill all the natives he came across but failed for the most part, save for a few successes. He attempted a genocide of the natives and unlawfully imprisoned many others, so it shouldn't be a surprise that we sentence him to execution, this time by stoning. Next is the main villain, Zekul Khan. He works against Tulio and Miguel in their quest for El Dorado. They're beyond disgusting. Zekul Khan attempts to stop them on multiple occasions, and does so through many criminal actions, including but not limited to abuse of power, terrorism, and attempted regicide. He was busy doing illegal things alongside pretending to be better than he actually is. In fact, he uses his high status to get away with it all, but that doesn't change the fact that he deserves to be punished. The best punishment is a public execution via beheading, likely by Shell, as she's a high-ranking member of the society. Now we head on to the fourth DreamWorks movie, Chicken Run. We'll be starting with Mr. Willard Tweedy. He's the husband of the main antagonist. He works as her paranoid right-hand man, working specifically with her to deal with her many, many chickens. However, this leads to him abusing animals. Because he doesn't really know that chickens are as intelligent as they are, and the fact that killing chickens wouldn't hold up as murder in any courtroom, we don't think those charges would stick. Same with unlawful imprisonment, though animal abuse is probably more of a likely charge. Mr. Tweedy may be able to get a lighter sentence since most of his crimes are done via his wife's coercion. However, we believe that his punishment should be as follows. Three years in prison. Next is Mrs. Tweedy. Mrs. Tweedy is the main antagonist and is a pretty good villain and criminal. She runs the chicken farm and she hates it. Stupid worthless creatures. This goes as far as to consistently abuse Mr. Tweedy by calling him an idiot and even attacking him at times. However, while the domestic abuse is bad, what really gets her above and beyond is her actions towards the chickens. She may not have been aware of their consciousness, even saying so during the film, but that doesn't change how bad she is. First, this is really unlawful imprisonment and slavery, but again, given these are chickens, animal cruelty is probably the more reasonable charge. She also abuses her power and commits fraud. Given most of her victims are chickens, we're going to sentence her to six years in prison without a possibility of parole. Tweety likely wouldn't care about the chickens after finding out the truth, and as such, it's not like this punishment is unfair. Now we move on to the final movie, Shrek. First on the docket for Shrek is Thelonious. Thelonious is the head torturer for Lord Farquaad, and as such does a lot of things under the orders of the Lord. Among the many things he's done for Farquaad, we'd be remiss to mention the act of torture that he's known for. However, beyond that, he's committed acts of abuse and kidnapping, mostly towards those that Farquaad deems necessary. All that is terrible, but the reality is, Thelonious is clearly lacking in the brains department, to the point where the court is going to cut him a break. We think the best punishment for him is five years in prison with a possibility for parole. Maybe with access to a good work-study program where he can apply his skills to a more ethical trade. Next is Major Hood. Hood is based on Robin Hood and leads a band of merry men. During a short appearance, he pops up just to be annoying and attempt to kill Shrek. However, his main crime, attempted murder, is a hefty crime. Shrek is an ogre, but he doesn't deserve to be threatened with a knife like this. He didn't do anything. His song also suggests he takes a small cut of the wealth he steals before giving it to the poor. Fortunately, nobody's hurt, with the exception of him and his band of merry men. But for attempted murder, we're giving Hood 13 years in prison. Just learn to mind your own business. Next is the unnamed Captain of the Dulot Guard. The captain is the head of the Dulot Guard and the head of the army that Farquaad leads. Much like Thelonious, he does all these things under the order of Lord Farquaad. However, he's in a much higher position and takes a much heavier punishment. His list of crimes begins with the unlawful imprisonment of many fairy tale creatures, which would also count as kidnapping. He's basically creating a refugee crisis by forcing these fairy tale creatures into Shrek Swamp. Transport you to a designated Resettlement. In many ways, it seems like Farquaad's regime is well on track towards genociding these fairy tale creatures, and he's been put in charge of it. So, given the fact that he isn't merely a soldier but a leader in this process, life in prison without parole is the most suitable punishment. Had this process gone any further, he would have gotten the death penalty. And finally, we have Lord Maximus Farquaad. 
Farquaad is the main antagonist of Shrek and an iconic villain, as he's had plenty of screen time to show off his personality and his crimes. So, we'll start with what we've already discussed. Kidnapping, illegal land appropriation, animal cruelty, unlawful imprisonment, and of course his attempted genocide of all the fairy tale creatures. Farquaad, however, does have other crimes worth mentioning, such as vandalism, his abuse of power, and of course his bevy of hate crimes. The fairy tale genocide is obviously an extension of those hate crimes. We also have to point out his direct use of torture, which we see specifically on Gingerbread Man. This is another war crime that would be considered a crime against humanity. He tortures Gingy for information on something he knows very little about. I'm the Gingerbread Man! Farquaad doesn't care about the lives of people and will do anything to further his own very bigoted agenda. As a surprise to nobody, Farquaad more than earns a public execution via a guillotine, as that's always a good choice for dictators. And you know, we'll let the Gingerbread Man cut the rope. Alright, court is dismissed, but let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.